The Book of Revelation Explained Now's the time .org. Welcome, friend. In this video, we will take a journey through the Book of Revelation and highlight some of the key events that will take place in these end times as we draw closer each day to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Book of Revelation is the only full-length end-time book in the Bible. From chapters 1 through 22, the Apostle John is recording an open vision that Jesus Christ gives to him to share with the church and all mankind. If you want to know more about the Book of Revelation, this tutorial will provide the sound doctrine needed to help you better understand this great book. Within this video, we will discuss the seven churches, the rapture of the saints of God, the seven-year covenant, the great tribulation, the return of the Jews to their promised land, Israel, the two witnesses, Elijah and Moses, return for 42 months, the Antichrist and the false prophet, the mark of the beast, the 21 judgments, seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vials, mystery Babylon, the battle of Armageddon, the second coming of Jesus Christ, the 1,000-year reign of Christ on earth, Judgment Day, the new heaven, the new earth, and new Jerusalem. The book of Revelation opens by informing us all that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ that was shown to John to share with mankind. This book is not a fable. It is not given by John, but it is given by the Lord Jesus Christ shown to John, and John recorded what Jesus showed him. Revelation chapter 1, verses 1, 2. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bare record of the word of God, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Some scoffers want to discount the book of Revelation as the ravings of a madman, a fable, or a book for ancient times. But nothing could be further from the truth. The book of Revelation is the Word of God, and it is for past, present, and future generations. The book of Revelation opens by promising a blessing for all who read and hear this book and those who keep the things written in this book. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. As Revelation chapter 1 continues, we find the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos, where John had been banished for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Patmos is a small Greek island in the Aegean Sea and it is still famous today for being the location where the Apostle John received this great vision from Jesus Christ that he records within the book of Revelation. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. When John sees Jesus in his glory, shining like the sun, John falls like a dead man, and Jesus restores him and gives him these instructions. Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 through 19. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, 
and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. In the first three chapters of the book of Revelation, Jesus gives John instructions to the seven churches in Asia, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, and Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Each of these seven churches represents part of the entire church of Jesus Christ. Just as we read other scriptures today that apply to people of times past, present, and the future, such as the book of Romans, Ephesians, and the four Gospels, so it is with the book of Revelation, because the Word of God also applies to all people from past, current, and future generations. Jesus begins with instructions for the seven churches, because the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 17, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? In Revelation, Jesus lets the churches know plainly from his own mouth that he sees all that we do, both the good behavior and bad behavior going on within his church. Just as a loving father, Jesus admonishes the bad behavior he encourages people to change before it's too late. He also shows each church the rewards for those who overcome. And Jesus expresses his great pleasure in seeing his saints do as his word commands us to do. Here is what Jesus said to the last of the seven churches called Laodicea. Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 22. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, and that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The Church of Laodicea could very well represent the present-day church in these end times, because many churches and Christians are lukewarm in these last days and teach a false gospel of appeasement to tickle the ears of the crowd, and not the repentance of sins and living holy lives to honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul said this day would come in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For well, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. In these last days before the rapture of the church and the great tribulation, God is purifying his church. He is getting the bride of Christ, the church, ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. The prophet Daniel warns us what will happen in the time of the end Daniel chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. How is many in the church being purified? Much the same way as gold is purified. Gold is taken through the fire to purge it of its impurities. 
Jesus says to the Laodicean church in Revelation chapter 3, verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. The word fire used here represents trials, and many people have had great trials lately and in recent years. But some don't understand that these fiery trials and these end times are a wake-up call from God to the church to repent of our sins, live godly and holy lives, because the coming of the Lord Jesus is closer than we think. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you, the good news is that if we surrender our will for God's will by coming out of the ways of the world and live the holy lives that Jesus calls us to live, we've purified ourselves and God will greatly bless you because this is pleasing to Him. We learn in 1 John 3rd chapter and verse 3, All who have this hope in Him purify themselves, just as He is pure. We hear a lot of teaching on grace and mercy, and God is a God of love, grace, and mercy. But He is also a God of judgment and wrath. We need more balanced teaching and preaching in these end times that is full of compassion and motivated by love, but balanced. We have two choices. You can ignore the warnings of God and keep living lukewarm and carnal lives, and perhaps miss heaven or you can surrender to God's will. Repent and live the abundant life that Jesus promised. God gives us these two choices in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Choose life, my friend, the book of Revelation is Jesus revealing deep truth and hidden mysteries to His church and all of mankind. The word revelation means the unveiling, disclosure, or revealing. So many people are hungry for the truth, and yet many preachers and teachers, even in these end times, don't even teach the book of Revelation. Friends, the book of Revelation is not designed to scare you. It is designed to reveal, disclose, and unveil the truth of God's Word to you, so the truth can make you free. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Let us discuss the rapture of the church. Jesus gave the saints of God this promise written to the church of Philadelphia in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Friends, there will be a rapture of those saints within the church who keep the word of his patience, because Jesus makes this promise, and sadly, many Christians are not ready. They are not looking each day for the second coming of the Lord Jesus to take His bride, the church, to heaven for the marriage supper of the Lamb recorded in Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 through 13 and in Revelation chapter 19 verses 6 through 9. Many in the church don't agree on exactly when the rapture will take place. Will the rapture be before the Great Tribulation, in the middle of the seven-year peace agreement, or will it take place after the Great Tribulation? We will answer that question. But first, let's clarify one key mistake that many make in Bible prophecy. The Great Tribulation is not a seven-year event. That is correct. Ask yourself, where in the Bible does it teach us that the Great Tribulation is seven years? Most of us have believed this at one time or another, but if you study this key point in the scriptures, you will find that the misconception of a seven-year tribulation comes from this single verse. In Daniel 9, verse 27, the Bible says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. 
even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The Bible clearly states that he, the Antichrist, will confirm a covenant or peace agreement with many for one week. Friends, that one week is symbolic of one seven-year covenant. The scriptures clearly do not teach a seven-year great tribulation, but rather a seven-year covenant or peace agreement. When does the great tribulation begin? Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 goes on to say that in the middle of the week or seven-year period, he, the Antichrist, will cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abomination he shall make it desolate. The Bible clearly teaches us that in the middle of the seven-year covenant, which means the second half of the seven-year covenant, will be when the Great Tribulation begins, which lasts for three and a half years or 42 months. The Great Tribulation begins when the abomination that causes desolation takes place in the temple in Jerusalem, and Jesus confirms this fact in Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 21. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be the great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. It is important that we share this truth with you now, because as we go further into the book of Revelation, knowing this will help you better understand the book of Revelation and why the Word of God makes reference in the book of Revelation to 42 months, 1260 days, or three and a half years to describe the time frame of certain events that will occur during the Great Tribulation. In fact, if you search the scriptures, you will find that the time frame of three and a half years is mentioned many times in the Bible. After the first three chapters in the book of Revelation, the church is not mentioned much. God begins to use more symbols and phrases that relate more to the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. We will explain why shortly, but first, let's take a look at Revelation chapters 4, 5, and 6. These next three chapters show us events that are taking place in heaven and around the throne of God. In Revelation chapter 4, John witnesses the throne of God and worship in heaven around God's throne. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. He that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Revelation chapter 4 shows us God's throne and the majestic worship of God by the four living creatures and the 24 elders seated around God's throne. In this chapter, we get a short glimpse of the high court of heaven and the glory of God as they worship the Creator of all things. In Revelation chapter 5, we see the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, in heaven as He is declared worthy to receive the book and to loose the seven seals on it. This book with the seven seals on it is like the title deed to heaven and earth, and Jesus is the only man worthy to open the book 
and to loose the seals. The seven seals are the first of 21 judgments that will take place on earth. These 21 judgments, beginning with the seven seals, will, one by one, begin to bring this current world to a climactic end and usher in the second coming of Jesus Christ to set up his kingdom here on earth. Revelation chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. As we prepare to discuss the seven seals, let's make it clear that there is a total of 21 judgments shown in the book of Revelation that are divided into three sets of seven. They are the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven vials. The number seven in scripture means completion or perfection, and it is used approximately 735 times in the Bible and 54 times in the book of Revelation. Each of the three sets of seven judgments all end with the second coming of Jesus. This is because they each tell a part of the end time narrative, and they each have a specific role to play in bringing this present world to an earth-shattering end as they usher in Christ's kingdom on earth. In Revelation chapter 6, the first six seals are open. When the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, opens the first four seals, the four horsemen of the apocalypse begin to ride upon the earth. In verses 1 and 2, the first seal is opened. A white horse and its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. More than likely, this white horse and its rider represents the Antichrist as he rides out to establish his one-world government. In verses 3 and 4, the second seal is opened. A red horse and its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. This red horse and its rider is symbolic of wars and widespread violence covering the earth. In verses 5 and 6, the third seal is opened. A black horse and its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then John hears a voice from among the four living creatures saying, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and six pounds of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. This black horse and its rider represents scarcity and lack. Thus, food prices will skyrocket. In verses 7 and 8, the fourth seal is opened. A pale horse and its rider was named Death, and Hell was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth part of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. This pale horse and its rider represents death as one quarter of the people on earth will be killed by wars, famine, plagues, and wild beasts. In verses 9 through 11, the fifth seal is opened, revealing martyrdom, as John sees some of the saints under the altar in heaven that were slain for the word of God and their testimony in Jesus. The saints say to God, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season, till their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Radical groups like ISIS and Hamas have targeted Christians and Jews for the word of God and their testimony. Some have even been beheaded in certain nations. This will happen more widespread under the Antichrist rule, but God will avenge the death of all the martyred saints at a time that he has set. There will be justice 
and their persecutors will not escape judgment. In verses 12 through 17, the sixth seal is opened. John sees the great day of God's wrath when the people of earth mourn because they see Jesus coming in the clouds, as he said in Matthew chapter 24, 29 through 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. The same description of end-time events that Jesus uses in parts of Matthew 24, he also uses in parts of Revelation chapter 6 concerning the sixth seal. The sixth seal shows us the coming of Christ instead of the seventh seal, because the seventh seal will introduce seven angels with the seven trumpets. In Revelation chapter 7, before the seventh seal is opened in the next chapter, God seals 144,000 Jews in their foreheads, 12,000 from each tribe of Israel. They will serve as a holy remnant during the Great Tribulation period, which as we have showed before will last for 42 months or three and a half years. God will not allow the earth to be hurt by the remaining judgments until the 144,000 are sealed in their foreheads for their protection. Some false teaching says that the 144,000 are the only people that will go to heaven, but that is not true. The 144,000 will be a holy and pure remnant that God will sanctify and set apart to demonstrate that even when most of the world turns against God and follows the Antichrist, God can raise up a people that will be faithful to Him even in the worst of times. Revelation chapter 7 verses 1 through 3. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. In Revelation chapter 7, we also see that after God seals the 144,000 Jews, He also shows us the raptured saints in heaven arrayed in white robes. The elder clearly tells the Apostle John that the people arrayed in white robes are they which came out of great tribulation, and to come out is what rapture means. The Greek word for rapture is harpazo. It literally means to snatch out or to seize. It's like a thief stealing something. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Jesus loves the church, and he will reward those saints who have been faithful with a rapture before the great tribulation period. God shows us the sealing of the 144,000 Jews on earth and the raptured saints in heaven arrayed in white robes before the great tribulation judgments of the seven trumpets and seven vials begin. This shows us that some saints will be supernaturally protected on earth and others raptured to heaven before the worst judgments of the Great Tribulation begin. Jesus promises this in Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man, as we showed in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus said the same thing to the Church of Philadelphia. Friends, watch and pray and live faithfully 
so that you will be counted worthy to escape these things and stand before Jesus arrayed in your white robe. Revelation chapter 7, verses 13 through 16. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. In Revelation chapter 8, the seventh seal is open, and it releases the seven angels that sounds the seven trumpets. Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. His silence in heaven for thirty minutes shows us the severity of the judgments of the seven trumpets that come after the abomination that makes desolate, marking the start of the great tribulation. The seven trumpets sound. In verse 7, the first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Friends, when the first trumpet sounds, one third of the earth will be burned up during the Great Tribulation. These judgments will be so earth-shaking, and this is why Jesus said this time period will be the worst suffering mankind has ever seen since the world began. In verse 8, the second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain all ablaze was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Jesus is showing us clearly that there will be an asteroid to hit Earth, and it will happen in the Great Tribulation period. Some falsely say that we are already in the Great Tribulation, but when you read and hear the judgments that will take place during the Great Tribulation, you can clearly see, without a doubt, that currently we are not in the Great Tribulation period. In verse 10, the third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. A star or meteor of some kind will hit Earth and cause one-third of the rivers and springs on Earth to be bitter, and many people will die from the poisoned water, perhaps from radiation poisoning, just as it happened in Chernobyl. But this judgment will be on a much larger scale. In verse 12, the fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. The celestial bodies that provide light to the earth will lose one third of their light during the Great Tribulation. The sun, the moon, and the stars will be darkened by one third. In Revelation chapter 9, verse 1, the fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss, and out of the smoke locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, 
but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes. During those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. The fifth trumpet will unleash a horde of demonic creatures on the earth from the pit of hell. These demonic creatures will torment the people of the world, except for those with the seal of God in their foreheads, for five months. Friends, these are obviously not Apache helicopters, as some have said. This judgment will be so severe that some people will try to kill themselves, but God will not allow the spirit of death to take them. During this time, the suffering from these creatures will torment mankind so much that many will try to commit suicide, but not be able to die. This is mind-boggling, but it will happen during the Great Tribulation, just as the Word of God shows. In verse 13, the sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates, and the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The sixth trumpet will cause another demonic attack to take place on earth when four large demonic angels that are bound in the river Euphrates will be released on earth to kill a third of mankind, possibly by war. In Revelation chapter 10, John hears seven thunders speak to him, but he was told not to write what he sees, but to seal up the vision. Revelation chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun, and his legs were like fiery pillars. He was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven say, Seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down. The angel that stands on the sea and the land tells John that in the days when the seventh angel sounds his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished, just as he announced to his servants the prophets. The next three chapters, 11, 12, and 13, are key to understanding the book of Revelation.
22. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. The angel tells John to measure the temple. Keep in mind, the second Jewish temple was destroyed, and the third temple is yet to be built. Until the third temple in Jerusalem is built, this prophecy will not be fulfilled. The scripture clearly tells us that the holy city, which is Jerusalem, will be given to the Gentiles for 42 months or three and a half years to be trodden under their feet. During the first three and a half years of the seven-year peace agreement, the Jews will rebuild their third temple. The Temple Institute in Israel has been making plans for this temple to be rebuilt for many years. In the middle of the seven-year peace agreement, the Antichrist will go into the rebuilt third temple and he will declare falsely that he is God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. This event will happen, and this will be the abomination that makes desolate, because when this happens, all hell will break loose on earth and the great tribulation will begin. Once the abomination that causes desolation takes place, the prophet Elijah and Moses, the two witnesses, will appear on earth and prophesy against the Antichrist and his evil one world government. Many Jewish people have been waiting for Elijah to return to earth to prepare the way for the Messiah for thousands of years, because scripture clearly teaches in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, that Elijah must come first to prepare the way for the Messiah. But the Messiah Jesus has a first and second coming. Elijah and Moses both do appear before Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration, and Peter, James, John witnessed this, and after seeing Elijah and Moses, his disciples asked Jesus in Matthew chapter 17, verses 10 through 13, Why then, say the scribes, that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Jesus confirms here that the literal Elijah will come before Jesus' second coming. But John the Baptist, who is the symbolic Elijah, prepared the way for Jesus' first coming. What many Jews did not understand is that the Messiah, Jesus, would have a first and a second coming. John the Baptist would be the forerunner for Jesus' first coming, and yes, Elijah and Moses would be the forerunner for his second coming. Friends, please understand that Elijah and Moses are two of the most central figures in the Jewish faith, and for them to both return to Israel and preach and prophesy for 42 months, this is going to help turn the hearts of the nation of Israel to their true Messiah, Yeshua. Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 11 verses 5 and 6. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. We have devoted so much time to chapter 11 because these two powerhouse preachers are going to be greatly used of God during the three and a half year Great Tribulation. 
The two witnesses are going to lead a revival in the nation of Israel like the world has never seen. Just as Moses went up against the Pharaoh of Egypt in the book of Exodus, the two witnesses will go up against the Antichrist, the end time Pharaoh. These two witnesses are going to prophesy many of the judgments that are listed in the book of Revelation, and the people of earth shall hate them. Though the Antichrist shall have Jerusalem for 42 months, he will not be able to take over the nation of Israel largely because of the ministry of Elijah and Moses. On December 23, 2016, the United Nations voted to approve UN Resolution 2334, which questions the legality of the Jews having certain parts of Jerusalem. The attack of the Gentiles' nations against Jerusalem has begun, and it will only intensify. This was also evident when President Trump signed an executive order declaring the United States would recognize Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Donald Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel was condemned by 128 countries in a United Nations vote. Nine countries supported the U.S. decision, 35 abstained, and 21 did not participate in the vote. Today, the U.S. is a friend and ally of Israel, but during the Great Tribulation, because the nations of the earth will finally take over Jerusalem, God will send Elijah and Moses to help defend Israel and to prepare the way for the second coming of Jesus. At the end of their 42-month prophecy, God will allow the Antichrist to kill Elijah and Moses in Jerusalem. The world is going to be so demonic and evil that the people are going to celebrate the death of the two witnesses by sending gifts to each other. Their dead bodies will lay in the streets of Jerusalem for three and a half days. And God is going to raise them from the dead and they shall ascend to heaven for all to see. This event will be televised for the nations to see. Revelation chapter 11 verses 9 through 12. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the Spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. When the Antichrist and his one world beast government sees that Elijah and Moses have left earth, they will begin to make plans to take over the entire nation of Israel at what is called the Battle of Armageddon. Armageddon means Megiddo, and the Valley of Megiddo is a literal place in Israel, and this is where the armies of the world will gather to take over Israel. But just as they are gathered, that is when the heavens shall roll back like a scroll, and the people of earth shall mourn as they see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. As we have stated before, these events are recorded in the sixth seal of Revelation, chapter 6, in verses 12 through 17, Matthew, chapter 24, and this day of slaughter as Jesus comes to set up his kingdom on earth. It is also shown in Revelation, chapter 19, verses 11 through 21. Once Elijah and Moses are resurrected and ascend to heaven, the seventh trumpet sounds to prepare the way for the second coming of Christ. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. The climactic events that will take place on earth during the Great Tribulation will all come to a crescendo with Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heaven to save the saints from the Antichrist and his demonic armies. Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head 
a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and it cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, or to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Let us define some symbolism used here in Revelation chapter 12. In Revelation chapter 12, the woman here is Israel, and the twelve stars are the twelve tribes of Israel. The red dragon is Satan. The seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns is the Antichrist one world government system that will have ten kings that rule seven divisions of his kingdom. Keep in mind that ten horns are ten kings, and the seven heads and seven crowns is the beast kingdom. Chapter 12 also shows us what happened in heaven when Lucifer fell from grace and led one-third of the angels in heaven in rebellion against God. Lucifer was the anointed cherub, and he is now Satan, and the angels he deceived are now demonic spirits. The child that will rule all nations is Jesus and he was caught up to God in his throne after his resurrection. Revelation chapter 12, verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Jesus said to his disciples in Luke chapter 21, verses 20 through 24, And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, and know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Jesus commanded any Jews near Judea to flee to the mountains, and those in Jerusalem to leave, because the Antichrist will kill any Jews or Christians he can reach during the Great Tribulation. The mountain area Jesus mentioned in Luke chapter 21 is referred to as the wilderness in Revelation chapter 12, verse 6. I want to share this revelation with you that Pastor Daniel Dunning shared with our church. There in the wilderness, God is going to supernaturally feed the nation of Israel for 1260 days or three years and six months, which is the time frame of the Great Tribulation as shown in Revelation chapter 12, verse 6. Just as God used Moses to feed the Jews for 40 years in the wilderness, God will do it again with both Elijah and Moses. Just as God used Moses in the Old Testament, God also used Elijah in this way in the Old Testament with the widow of Zarephath in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 through 16. Elijah being sent to this widow during a time of a three-and-a-half-year drought in Israel is symbolic of how God will later use Elijah again, this time with Moses, to feed the house of Israel supernaturally during the Great Tribulation period. Elijah is sent to a widow woman in 1 Kings chapter 17 during a three-and-a-half-year drought. And in Revelation chapter 12, he is again sent by God during a three and a half year drought to the woman, which is Israel. Jesus gives us a clue in scripture to the importance of the time period of the drought when Elijah was sent to the widow, when Jesus makes reference to this in Luke chapter four, verse 25. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, heaven was shut up three years and six months, 
when great famine was throughout all the land. Jesus highlights the time frame of three years and six months to show us the importance of what this length of time represents. This teaches us that God blesses his people in patterns, and he also brings judgment on the wicked in patterns. The Old Testament bears witness to the New Testament. Satan tries to copy or counterfeit God's way, so he will do his evil in patterns as well. Many Jews are going back home to Israel in our current times because of the growing persecution of the Jews in many parts of the world. Just as many Jews went back home to Israel in the 1940s due to the persecution they experienced in Nazi Germany under Hitler, who was also an antichrist. We have good news for the Jewish people. Though times may be getting rough for many Jews in certain parts of the world, God is calling many of you precious people back home to Israel, never again to lose your nation, as he said he would in Amos chapter 9, verses 14 and 15. We are witnessing a modern-day exodus, with so many Jews going home to Israel from all over the world, and the good news is that God has a plan to rescue and protect the nation of Israel from the evil that will come upon this world during the time of Jacob's trouble, also called the Great Tribulation Period. Psalm 122, verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 12. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. In verses 7 through 12, we are shown a war between the archangel Michael and his angels against the dragon and his demonic angels. But this is not an ancient war, as some suppose. This war will take place in the end times sometime before the Great Tribulation begins. Satan has been allowed access to heaven to go before the throne of God for thousands of years, and this is clearly shown to us in the book of Job, chapter 1, verses 6 through 12, when Satan accuses Job before God's throne, and God allows Job to be tested. But the book of Job ends with Job passing the test, and Job is blessed by God with double of all his possessions before Satan's attack. God unveils great truth to us in Revelation chapter 12 by showing us that Satan has been accusing all of God's people day and night before the throne of God since the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden. Satan, knowing his time is short as the end times draw closer to the return of Christ Jesus, that old devil will make one last attempt to overthrow God's throne in heaven. Michael and his angel armies will defeat Satan and his demonic angels, and the devil and his demonic angels will be cast out, and they will never again be allowed access to heaven. Once this happens, the devil will come down to earth, having great wrath, because he knows he only has a short time left. In Revelation chapter 13, we are shown the rise of the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the mark of the beast. The beast that come out of the sea is the Antichrist, and the sea that he comes out of represents humanity. Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads 
the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Friends, the Antichrist is the devil's counterfeit messiah. Many people of the world will accept his lying wonders and worship him, but many others will resist him and not fall for his deception. The scriptures clearly tells us of the time frame that he will work his demonic plan, and that is for 42 months or three and a half years. Just as Jesus, the true Christ, begins his holy ministry of salvation and redemption beginning at age 30 until he was over 33, which is about three and a half years, so will the Antichrist's evil plan of destruction be for three and a half years or 42 months. Just as Jesus went into the temple in Jerusalem to announce that he is the Christ, the Son of God, the Antichrist will copy that also and will tell the lie that he is God in the temple in Jerusalem. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, we see that the Antichrist shall make a seven-year covenant or peace agreement. But in the middle of the seven years, he will make the false assertion that he is God in the rebuilt temple. But we must keep in mind that some earth-shattering event will more than likely cause the Antichrist's rise to power. If there was a nuclear war, World War III, or some other devastating worldwide event where perhaps millions are killed, the world governments would easily want to unite in the name of peace and safety, and they would create a new world order, or one world government. In the midst of a world torn by war, economic disaster, and devastation, the Antichrist will emerge as the savior of the world. The Antichrist will do what Nimrod with the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 through 9 and what Hitler with Nazi Germany only tried to accomplish. The Antichrist will unite the world against the true God, against Christians and Jews, and against Christ Jesus. That is why he is called the Antichrist. Satan is the architect behind the political and racial division and nuclear tensions we see growing in the world today. And through this division and tension, the Antichrist will rise as a peacemaker to solve the world's problems. But he shall be a liar and Satan incarnate. Just as Jesus is God incarnate, the Antichrist will be possessed by Satan and Satan will give the Antichrist his demonic power. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Any Christians that are not raptured will be left behind, and the scriptures teach us that the Antichrist will make war with saints, and he will overcome them. Many will have to resist the Antichrist even until death. What Hitler did to the Jews in Nazi Germany, the Antichrist will do to any Christians or Jews in his reach. The false prophet will arise, and he will be a counterfeit of the true prophets, John the Baptist and Elijah. He will cause people to worship the beast, the Antichrist, and he will do lying signs and wonders, even causing fire to come down from heaven, as Elijah did in the Old Testament. The mark of the beast is a microchip, that the Antichrist will make mandatory for all persons to have implanted in their right hand or forehead. No one will be allowed to buy or sell without this chip. If anyone resists, they will be put to death. That means no shopping at the grocery store, no McDonald's, no fast food of any kind, no shopping of any kind without the mark of the beast. Be warned that anyone that takes the mark of the beast will be eternally damned and go to hell. This is not a joke. This is your soul salvation. Do not take the mark of the beast. 
Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. Revelation chapter 14 gives us more insight into who the 144,000 Jews are. And it also shows us three angels who have messages for the people of earth. The message of the third angel is critical because it is a dire warning for anyone who takes the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 through 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Anyone that take the mark of the beast will be eternally damned, and any false prophet that says otherwise will be judged. The mark of the beast is a death sentence to anyone that takes it for all eternity. In Revelation chapter 15, we see the angels in heaven preparing to pour out the last seven plagues, which are the seven vials. Revelation chapter 15, verses 6 through 8. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth for ever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. In Revelation chapter 16, we are shown the seven vials of the wrath of God. These are the seven last plagues that will be poured out upon the earth during the great tribulation. Verse 1, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Verse 2, The first angel went and poured out his vial on the earth and it became a loathsome and malignant sore on the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. Everyone with the mark of the beast and those who worship his image will be tormented by a plague during this judgment. Verse 3. The second angel poured out his vial into the sea, and it became blood like that of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. With this judgment, the entire sea will be turned to blood, and every living thing in the sea will die. Verse 4. The third angel poured out his vial into the rivers and the springs of waters, and they became blood. All rivers and springs will be turned to blood when this vial is poured out. It is hard to imagine a world like this, but it will happen, just as the Word of God says. Verses 8 and 9. The fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and it was given to it to scorch men with fire. Men were scorched with fierce heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has the power over these plagues. And they did not repent so as to give him glory. The sun begins to scorch men with fire and brutal heat during this plague. The people will blaspheme the name of God and not repent. Verse 10 and 11. The fifth angel poured out his vial on the throne of the beast, 
kingdom became darkened, and they gnawed their tongues because of pain, and they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and they did not repent of their deeds. This plague turns the beast kingdom dark, and intense pain and sores fell upon the Antichrist's followers, and they again blasphemed the name of God and did not repent. Verse 12. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river, the Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way would be prepared for the kings from the east. Verses 16 through 21. The seventh angel poured out his bowl upon the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder, and there was a great earthquake there had not been since man came to be upon the earth. So great an earthquake was it, and so mighty. The great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. Babylon the great was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of his fierce wrath, and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And huge hailstones, about 100 pounds each, came down from heaven upon men, and men blessed from God because of the plague of the hail, because its plague was extremely severe. Friends, God's wrath is being poured out in these 21 judgments in the book of Revelation on the Antichrist, his followers, and his demonic world system. The wrath of Satan is also being waged against God's people, Christians, Jews, Israel, Jerusalem, and all things pure and holy. God is just in these 21 judgments by pouring out his wrath on this evil world who has killed Jews and Christians for the word of God and their testimony in Jesus Christ. An angel of God declares this in Revelation chapter 16, verses 5 and 6. Then I heard the angel in charge of the water say, You are just in these judgments, O Holy One, you who are and who were. For they have shed the blood of your holy people and your prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. God is just, my friends, and he will not always remain silent. Many people today are living in rebellion against God and refuse to repent, accept Jesus, and live for him. But the day will come when all who do not accept Jesus Christ will wish they had done so. Now's the time to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and live for Him. Revelation chapter 17 shows us the woman called Mystery Babylon riding the beast. Verse 1 and 2. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Verses 4 through 6. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Friends, exactly which city or nation it is that Mystery Babylon the Great the mother of harlots and abominations represents, has been the subject of debate for well over a thousand years. We are not going to debate the identity of Mystery Babylon in this section, but instead we are going to present you with the biblical facts needed for you to understand who Mystery Babylon is in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. Keep in mind that this city or nation is so central to the book of Revelation that two chapters are devoted to this vision that is given to the Apostle John by Jesus Christ. Let's first identify that the destruction of Mystery Babylon the Great does not happen until the seventh vial is poured out on the earth, which is near the end of the Great Tribulation, 
before Jesus comes in clouds of heaven to set up his kingdom. Revelation chapter 16, verses 17 through 19. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices, and thunders, and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. The judgment of the great harlot Babylon does not happen before the seven-year covenant. It does not happen before the great tribulation period starts. But it does happen near the end of the great tribulation before Jesus comes to set up his kingdom on earth. This will help you better understand her identity. When John sees the woman riding the beast with seven heads, seven crowns, and ten horns, John says in verse 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. This woman represents the capital of the beast's government. Babylon is the city of Satan, just as Jerusalem is the city of God. Jerusalem will be the capital of Jesus' kingdom on earth, and Babylon will be the capital of the Antichrist kingdom on earth. New Jerusalem is the Lamb's wife, and Mystery Babylon is Satan's wife. Satan always tries to imitate God, but the devil is a counterfeit, an imposter, and a thief. During the Great Tribulation, many of the saints and martyrs of Jesus will be killed in this city, that is why the scripture says that she is drunk with their blood. This demonic great harlot Babylon will be so extremely seductive, so much so that even the Apostle John looked upon her with great amazement. The angel interrupted and asked John in verse 7, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? This Babylonian demonic influence is alive in our culture's music today, movies, Hollywood, media, the political system, many cities around the world, and even in some religious practices, because Babylon is a spirit. Babylon is a seductive and demonic spirit, and it can operate in any city, nation, political system, or religious system that allows its tentacles to come in and deceive its people and weave its web. For this reason, many people debate that Mystery Babylon is America, Europe, the revived Roman Empire, the political system, and even the apostate Roman Catholic Church. The tentacles of Babylon are present in certain cities of all these nations, political and religious systems, and we see that in the legalization of same-sex marriage, recreational marijuana, and abortion on demand, the ordination of gay priests, people turning away from God and living more secular lifestyles, people becoming lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. There are a lot of Babylonian cities and systems in our world today, and they will all be judged if they don't repent. But keep in mind that the woman riding the beast is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Great Babylon is going to be Sin City on steroids. People are so preoccupied with looking at our present cities, nations, or systems when interpreting who Mystery Babylon the Great Harlot could be that they forget that God called the city a mystery for a reason. God does not give us the name of the city in chapters 17 and 18 for a reason, but he gives us the characteristics of the city so that his people will be able to recognize it when it emerges on the scene. Keep this in mind. The Antichrist will create a new world order, and he will be an evil mastermind. He will cause nations to prosper, and he will make them very rich. He will legalize all manner of sin and evil, yet everything pure and godly he will seek to destroy. His charisma and charm will be so seductively intoxicating that he will falsely say that he is God, and he will lead many astray. Hear how the prophet Daniel describes the Antichrist in Daniel chapter 8, verses 24 and 25. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, 
and he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people and through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many he shall also stand up against the prince of princes but he shall be broken without hand what Nimrod and Hitler only tried to do, the Antichrist will succeed for a short season. He will even remake Jerusalem, the holy city, into what the Bible refers to as Sodom and Egypt. The Antichrist and his evil seven region and ten king beast government will have control of Jerusalem for 42 months, and even Jerusalem will become like Sodom and Gomorrah. We learned of this when discussing the two witnesses being killed by the Antichrist in Jerusalem at the end of their 42-month prophetic ministry in Revelation chapter 11, verses 7 and 8. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. We know that the great city referred to here is Jerusalem, that is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, because the Word of God says, where also our Lord Jesus was crucified. For this reason, we can add Jerusalem to the list of possible locations for the Antichrist to set up his great Babylonian capital of his beast government for 42 months. Among those, we can also add the aforementioned most often debated nations or systems for Great Babylon, America, Europe, the revived Roman Empire, the political system, the apostate Catholic Church, or Jerusalem. The reason we are not going to identify who Mystery Babylon is in this teaching is because by highlighting the characteristics as they are stated in the Holy Scriptures, you will be able to identify who she is when Great Babylon emerges on the world scene. Keep in mind that the capital city of the beast government will be Great Babylon, and its tentacles will stretch around the world to many other harlot nations and cities. That is why Great Babylon is called the Mother of Harlots and Abominations. We learn how vast and far-reaching Babylon's demonic influence will reach in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. No need for anyone to be dogmatic about who Mystery Babylon is right now, because many people will not know for sure until the Antichrist is revealed, the man of sin, the son of perdition. We should all love our nation and cities, but when a nation or city turns away from God and its leaders make laws that go against God's word, which made them great, that nation will suffer the same fate as Sodom and Gomorrah. We must all remember that God did not even spare the ancient nation of Israel when they rebelled against Him. God is merciful, but He is also a God of judgment. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. Revelation chapter 18 shows us the fall of the city or nation referred to as Babylon. Babylon the Great will be destroyed before the Great Tribulation ends. Verses 1 through 3. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. God urges the people of earth to come out of her, that they will not be a partaker in her judgment. Just as Lot was urged by an angel in Genesis chapter 19 to come out of Sodom and Gomorrah before God rained down fire and brimstone, 
So God has sent his angel to warn God's people to come out of Mystery Babylon the Great. Verse 4 and 5. And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. The kings of the earth that participated in her sins and prospered with her shall mourn her destruction. Verses 9 and 10. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. We learn that this nation was destroyed in one hour, possibly by a nuclear attack or some kind of disaster. Her destruction will come in one day. Verses 15 to 17. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Revelation chapter 19 shows us the marriage supper of the Lamb, Jesus coming back, riding the white horse with the armies of heaven following him. Also we learn of the eternal damnation of the Antichrist, the false prophet, and those who take the mark of the beast. The marriage supper of the Lamb takes place in heaven before the second coming of Jesus. Verse 7 through 10. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is the great and terrible day of the Lord. Great is this day for his saints of God, and terrible is the day for the Antichrist, the false prophet, and everyone that followed the beast by taking his mark. All the death and devastation that has been poured out into the earth is going to be over soon as the King of Kings comes to set up his kingdom of righteousness on earth and usher in 1,000 years of peace. Verses 11 through 16. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and the whole world shall see him. Jesus shall come to bring God's kingdom to earth, and he shall rule with a rod of iron. Jesus defeats the beast and false prophet and throws them alive into the lake of fire. 
Jesus also slays all those who took part of the beast's one world system and took the mark of the beast. Verses 19 through 21. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that brought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Revelation chapter 20 shows us Satan is bound for a thousand years, and Jesus rules earth for one thousand years, and the saints rule with him. Verses 1 through 3. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Jesus will rule earth from the capital city of Jerusalem, and for 1,000 years there shall be peace on earth. Thrones and judgment was given to the saints. Jesus is the King Supreme, and we will rule and reign with him. Verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. All saints that died in Christ and those who were raptured will be a part of the first resurrection and will rule with Christ for one thousand years. The second death, which is the lake of fire judgment, will come after the one thousand year reign of Christ. Verses 5 and 6. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. At the end of the thousand years, Satan will be loose from the bottomless pit and he will go out to deceive the nations and turn them against Christ Jesus. When Jesus comes in the clouds to set up his kingdom, there will be some people and children that did not take the mark of the beast, but also have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior. They will not be slain at Jesus' second coming. They will be allowed to live with Jesus and the saints for 1,000 years. At the end of the 1,000 years, Satan will be loose, and he will tempt a multitude of them to, once again, go to Jerusalem and try to overthrow King Jesus. When they have surrounded the camp of the saints at Jerusalem, God will cause fire to come down from heaven and destroy them all. Satan will then be cast in the lake of fire, where the beast and false prophet are. Verses 7-10 through 10. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. The Final Judgment At the end of the 1,000-year reign of Christ on earth, the great white throne judgment will take place. All the dead and people in hell will arise for the final judgment. All people will come before the throne of Jesus and he will separate the sheep from the goats. 
Death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire, and everyone whose name was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Verses 11 to 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 21 shows us the new heaven and the new earth and new Jerusalem. Verses 1 and 2. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city of New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Friends, the current earth and heaven will not just be renovated as some believe. There will literally be a new planet earth and a new heaven for the saints to enjoy and rule with Jesus Christ. Satan and his demonic angels defiled both the current earth and heaven and God will give us a new earth and a new heaven that has never been defiled nor shall ever be defiled by sin. The new earth and the new heaven will be beautiful beyond what we can even imagine. Verse 9 through 13. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and shewed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The New Jerusalem will be the eternal capital city of the new planet Earth. Jesus will rule the world from the capital city, the square footage of the New Jerusalem will be greater than the size of the entire United States. If the city is this big, imagine how large the entire planet Earth will be. The capital city will be huge and more beautiful than words can describe. There will be streets of gold and gates of pearl. We shall rule together with Jesus Christ as the royal sons and daughters of God. Verses 21 through 27. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie but they which are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Can you imagine a new earth with no sun or moon because the glory of God lights it? And Jesus is the lamp that lights the world. 
There will be no night there, and the light will shine always. There will be no more sickness or pain, no death, no thieves or sin. Make sure your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, my friend, and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. Revelation chapter 22 is the final chapter of the book of Revelation. There is a river of life that proceeds out of the throne of God and the Lamb, and there are trees bearing fruit on either side. God gave us taste buds, my friends, and we will have them in His kingdom too, and use them to enjoy the goodness of God's kingdom that He has prepared for us. The perfect paradise that Adam and Eve lost in the Garden of Eden will be fully restored by the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Verses 1-5 through five. And he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there was the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. Friends, all the pain and suffering we see going on in this present world will one day soon come to an end. And God has prepared a new heaven and a new earth for us that is a perfect paradise. There will be no more poverty there, no hunger or thirst. Each of us will have a mansion, as Jesus teaches us in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. The Spirit of God will fill the earth as water fills the sea. There will be such peace and joy there that even the lion will lay down with the lamb. One day we will all be with King Jesus and enjoy the new heaven and the new earth that he has prepared for us. There will be no more sickness or death there. We will all live forever and enjoy the presence of God and the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, for all eternity. Many people look at the suffering in this present world and they mistakenly blame God. But Satan is the cause of all the pain and suffering in this present world because he is the tempter who deceives people into sin just as he tempted Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And sin separates us from God. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The book of Revelation shows us how this present world will come to an end, and Revelation closes showing us that Christ Jesus and the saints of God will triumph in victory over Satan and all his demonic forces. This world will become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Jesus also reminds us in this final chapter of Revelation who will be and who will not be granted access to the kingdom of God. Verse 14 through 17. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. Verses 20 and 21. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The new heaven 
The new earth and the new Jerusalem is God's gift to His children. We are joint heirs together with Christ Jesus. Make sure that you have accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, because no man can inherit these promises without first accepting Jesus Christ. Share this teaching on the book of Revelation with all your friends, family, and in group meetings so that they can be warned of the things to come and the great blessings awaiting all who are saved by the blood of the Lamb. We have also prepared a full-length video that goes all the way through every chapter and verse in the book of Revelation, chapters 1 through 22. May we see you in the kingdom of heaven, my friend. Let thy kingdom come, Lord Jesus. The book of Revelation explained. This video presentation has been brought to you by nowsthetime.org.